So four mistakes that can ruin your IT career. Now, this is an article that one of my students sent to me. A lot of my students are looking for that first job, but beyond that, they are concerned about how to manage a career once they get their foot in the door. So let's look at the top pitfalls to avoid for a successful and fulfilling IT journey. This is an article by Dennis. So first one, getting comfortable. One of the biggest mistakes that can ruin your IT career is getting too comfortable. It's natural to want to be comfortable, but it can also lead to complacency and a lack of motivation to improve. This is true. And this is something that sometimes surprises people who are looking to break into the field, but complacency is in the majority of IT professionals. You get that job, you get into a large enterprise. These big companies are like the Titanic. They don't turn quickly. They don't adopt cutting edge frameworks very quickly because they have systems that are in place, they're working well, they're running their business, and their employees tend to evolve only as quickly as the company evolves. And something a lot of people don't realize is that even though training is available at a lot of good employers, that training is usually focused on doubling down or enhancing your skills to do the job that's in front of you or the tasks that are important to the company. A company generally will not pay for training for you to go learn something else that's new and fun that isn't being used inside the company. That's not economical, it's not in their best interest, and it's not something they typically do. So what happens then is you have to be willing to work outside of your normal job to develop skills that are outside of your job description. And then you have people that have families, they have other obligations, and, and you're just tired sometimes because you're working a full-time job. So it's not necessarily bad that some people get complacent and they treat that as a nine to five career, but there's a couple big downsides. Number one, salary you're probably not going to reach the peak pay grades of the salaries. And the author calls this out here. Once you achieve a certain level of salary to be comfortable, you know, I, I know that if you're trying to break into the field and you're poor right now, but there is a level of pay where if you manage your lifestyle correctly, getting an extra five, 10, 15, 20% pay just doesn't really move the needle for you anymore. And, and I know that's weird if you've never been there, but a lot of my peers have experienced that there's a point where the pay just doesn't matter anymore. You're either interested in the work-life balance or you're interested in interesting projects to solve or you're interested in developing new skills. There's a lot of different other intrinsic motivations besides the pay. So this complacency thing and getting comfortable, the downside is if you get laid off. So a lot of companies are way behind the curve. And they're, and they're using a lot of legacy stuff. And if you get laid off, those jobs are generally harder to find. And you may find yourself in a place where you have these skills, but they're not really valuable in mass in the market anymore. And that's kind of where I kind of step back and try to encourage people who are complacent. Like think about what would happen if you did lose your job. Keep an eye on the job opportunities in your area and make sure that you're at least treading water to the point where you could reasonably apply for other positions in the area, or you may find yourself long-term unemployed. And then you run into an extra problem because when you pick up those skills, well, now you're a senior person, but you've got beginner level skills in a certain technology, and nobody's going to want to pay you what you used to get paid because your skills aren't good enough to bring senior level to the table in that particular aspect. So getting complacent, generally not a good thing. You're, you're rolling the dice, you're taking a risk, but a lot of people do that. If you do wanna work a nine to five and, and programming is a job, not really a passion and things like that, that's okay. Look for very big companies, look for jobs in like government and things like that where it's slow moving, work-life balance may be mandated, especially in government where you might be part of a union or things like that. And you can achieve that really comfortable, low stress, you know, lifestyle. It is, it is possible and it's okay if that's what your goal is. Not everybody has to be this go, go, go. I'm gonna stay at the cutting edge of everything. Plenty of people have careers not doing that. 
So the next one here is lack of networking skills. So another mistake that can ruin your IT career is a lack of networking skills. Being intelligent is important, but it's often not enough to achieve your goals. This is true. You know, and he goes on to say, do not underestimate the power of networking in the IT industry. By attending industry events, conferences, and meetups, you can connect with other professionals, learn about new opportunities, and build valuable relationships. Invest time and effort in networking, and it pays off in big ways for your career. Absolutely true, 100%. You need to network. And I know that IT, we have the stereotype. A lot of people are introverted in this field. It's very common. But getting out and networking, I can tell you, me and my peers who are senior professionals with more than 10 years of experience, very, very rarely do we ever apply for positions. We always get tapped on the shoulder by somebody we used to work with. We get tapped on the shoulder by recruiters that we know things like that. Almost every side gig or contract that I have taken in the last 10 years, I have not applied for. I don't have a profile on any of the gig worker sites or anything like that. People reach out to me because they know me, because they've worked with me before, because they trust me, because we have that rapport. And as you level up in your career, that is the norm. So sometimes people wonder, they're like, well, you know, we put out all these job ads for really senior developers and we're not finding very good candidates or we're not getting very many candidates at all. And that's because a lot of the really good senior people don't apply for jobs. And you can only get to that level where you don't have to do that anymore if you work on networking. So go to conferences, go to meetup groups, make sure when you go into a company, if you find the people that are the movers and the shakers and the people you really like working with, make sure to spend the extra effort to build relationships with those people because it's going to make your career more lucrative. So definitely agree with that. Uh, burnout. So while continuous learning and associated pressure are essential for a successful career in IT, I don't necessarily agree, agree with that. You don't have to be a continuous learner. You have to be good enough. And a lot of times you there will be times when you're busy with projects and, and you just can't do extra things. You have to focus on your project. And then there's other times where your workload is rather light and you can spend some time doing that. This is a balance act. Um, continuous learning will lead to burnout. So. As a software engineer, you need to have a strong mental and physical health to keep up with the demands of the job. And the physical health here is a key as well. I, I can tell you in my career, I perform a lot better when I'm working out, when I'm doing my strength training, when I'm taking my walks, things like that. You don't have to be like super athlete, but the health of the body and the health of the mind are definitely related. And you can find science and things on that out there. You should always exercise, practice good hygiene, you know, eat healthy, take care of your health. Those are all things that will help you perform better mentally on the job. And burnout is something that is very, very common in the field because you can only think so much and you can only grind at something so much. So you need to be willing to slow things down and take advantage of the laws and realize that you don't have to be hyper productive every day. And, you know, the author makes a really good point here about taking breaks when you need them, prioritizing self care and don't let work and consume your entire life. We've got this always on thing, especially in IT, you're going to get these notifications on your phone and things like that. When I'm leading teams, I usually like to set a rotation schedule if we have to be on call and we have to answer notifications as a team. I always like to make sure that we rotate that amongst team members so that people have permission to unplug. And when I go on vacations, I usually turn off all my notifications. I turn off my email. You know, even as a business owner, when I'm running a small business, I would go on vacation and I would say, hey, you know, my business partner can call me. Nobody else can call me. They're the only one. If you think you need me, go to my business partner first and they'll determine whether I need to be bothered. And it's very important to keep that firewall when you are taking time off to not be bothered. 
But to do that, you have to set it up. You have to be able to communicate that. You have to be able to set that boundary and enforce that boundary. And it's a very good thing. And, you know, they even mentioned seeking professional help if necessary. That's something, you know, people talk about like toxic masculinity or whatever. Um, mental health professionals are very helpful. And I've, and I've seen people and I've benefited myself during my divorce um, from working with mental health professionals. Sometimes you just need that neutral party. You need to vent. You need to talk about things. And, and that's a very healthy thing. If you feel like you need help, if you feel like you're drowning, you should go get help. Because burnout will not only destroy your career, but it can destroy your social life too because you can get grouchy, you can fall out and stop doing that networking and things like that. You can alienate your friends and family. Um, very destructive if you don't handle it healthfully. So this is, this is very good advice in this article so far. Sticking to one company. Now another mistake that can ruin your IT career is getting too attached to a particular company or an individual. While it can be tempting to join a small startup and become a star employee, be cautious of falling for empty promises from your boss to keep you on board. Now, I'm not sure what that has to do with sticking to one company. This isn't necessarily bad advice, um, but startups versus enterprises, very different jobs, very different motivations, very different way that you approach those. I'll probably do a video on that in the future. That's actually a really good topic. Now, in a small company, it might be easier to shine and stand out, uh, but don't let that blind you to potential red flags. Don't be afraid to ask for fair compensation, promotions, and other benefits you deserve. Now in small companies, they're usually cash poor. So you usually can't make as much money in a small company as you can make in a, in a bigger, more established company. But usually, you know, what, what he's talking about here, it's not so much the fair compensation, it's the perks. You can usually negotiate a lot better perks at a small company. Like, hey, I'm going to work from home. I know that working from home is a little more common now, but things are starting to pull back to the office. But smaller companies that struggle to pay better, you know, they'll do things like maybe get you a better, better equipment. Maybe they'll let you have some training days. Maybe they'll give you better vacation days. Maybe they'll let you work four tens instead of five eights, you know, things like that. There's a lot of ways you can be creative with a small company if you're an employee that they can't compensate according to the market. And don't be afraid to negotiate those kind of things. I usually like to use a phrase when I'm negotiating with people like, hey, you know, once we've decided that we want to work together, it, it's just a matter of us putting our heads together and figuring out how to how to figure everything out. And people respond to that collaboration, you know, very well. It's OK to wait a few months for a raise or perks, but be careful not to become too emotionally attached to a particular company or individual. Keep your options open, you know. In the IT industry, it's common to change jobs and companies frequently. This is true. Remember that the biggest salary increases often come from moving to a new employer rather than waiting for promotions within the same company. This is absolutely 100% true. Every time I have changed jobs in my early career when I was doing that, obviously now I'm independent, but in my early career, every time I changed jobs, I got somewhere between 15 and 30% salary increase. Most jobs, when you get your annual performance review, will give you somewhere between two and 7%. So if you stay in one spot and you never change companies, you are going to lose a lot of money over 20, 30, 40 years. And that's just, that's just the way it is. I mean, companies for some reason, they just budget you know, annual performance reviews, annual increases the way they do, but changing jobs, that pays. Now you don't wanna change jobs too quickly and you don't wanna change jobs just for the money. It has to be a better opportunity. You know, you're learning something new, you're joining a better team, you're learning a new domain, things like that. The money will come no matter which company you go to. You just wanna make sure that that culture, that environment, is a better first step because money's only a band-aid. You'll be happy with the pay for a little bit, but if the job sucks, uh, within three months you're gonna be looking again. And that's not a good place to be because now all of a sudden you're explaining to recruiters and HR people and interviewers, why are you leaving your job so quickly? 
but he recommends don't get too comfortable in one place for too long. Don't be afraid to pursue new opportunities when they arise by staying current with industry trends and networking, again, the networking with other professionals, you can position yourself to take advantage of new and exciting opportunities. And while there's nothing inherently wrong with staying at the same company for an extended period, be mindful of the potential downsides. You may miss out on valuable experience and networking opportunities, and you may become complacent and pigeonholed in your role. That is all true. It is good to jump around for pay and opportunities. So again, uh, this is a this is a very good article. I, I agree with most of what was said here. Uh, just just a few things. People have a tendency, especially the high flyers in IT, they have a tendency to look down on people who aren't go, 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 learn, learn, learn. But that is not the expectation in the IT career. The majority of people are pretty complacent and they do just fine. The networking is is huge. This is probably the most important thing you can do for your career is to network well because that's gonna lead you to those opportunities. It's gonna lead you to better pay. It's gonna lead you to more flexibility. And then especially if someday you wanna go independent like I am, then networking is, is, a, is a must or else you're just gonna go bankrupt trying to, trying to work for yourself if, if nobody knows you and nobody likes you. Um, so all in all, you know, really good article. You know, good job, Dennis. And, and I hope that my additional color provided value to, uh, to you all. Happy coding.